Generative AI is an amazing technology, but it can't do everything. In this video, we'll take a careful look at what LLMs can and cannot do. We'll start off with what I found to be a useful mental model for what it can do. And after that, let's look together at some specific limitations of LLMs. I found that understanding the limitations can lower the chance that you might get tripped up trying to use them for something that they're really not good at. So with that, let's dive in. If you're trying to figure out what prompting an LLM can do, here's one question that I found to provide a useful mental framework, which is, I'll ask myself, can a fresh college grad, following only the instructions in the prompts, complete the task you want? For example, can a fresh college grad follow instructions to read an email to determine if an email is a complaint? Well, I think a fresh college grad could probably do that, and an LLM can do that pretty well too. Or can a fresh college grad read a restaurant review to determine if it's a positive or negative sentiment. I think they could do that quite well too. And so too can prompting an LLM. Here's another example. Can a fresh college grad write a press release without any information about the COO or your company? Well, this fresh college grad just graduated from college. They only just met you and don't know anything about you or your business. And so the best it could do is maybe write a really generic and not quite satisfying press release like this. But on the flip side, if you were to give them more context about your business and about the CEO, then we can ask, can this fresh college grad write a press release given the basic relevant context? And I think they may be able to do that decently well. And so too can the large language model. When you're picturing an LLM as doing many of the things that a fresh college grad might be able to do, think of this fresh college grad as having lots of background knowledge, that they know lots of general knowledge off the internet, but they have to complete this task without access to a web search engine and they don't know anything about you or your business. For clarity, this mental model, thought experiment, fresh college grad, has to complete the task with no training specific to your company or your business, and every time you prompt your LLM, the LLM does not actually remember earlier conversations. And so it's as if you're getting a different fresh college drive for every single task. So you don't get to train them up over time on the specifics of your business or the style you want them to write. This rule of thumb of asking what a fresh college grad can do is an imperfect rule of thumb. There are things college grads can do that LLMs cannot and vice versa. But I found this to be a useful starting point for thinking through what LMs can and cannot do. And while we're focused on this slide on what prompting an LM can do, next week when we talk about generative AI projects, we'll talk about some slightly more powerful techniques that might be able to expand what you can do with generative AI beyond this fresh college grad concept. Now let's take a look at some further specific limitations of LMs. First is knowledge cutoffs. An LLM's knowledge of the world is frozen at the time of its training. More precisely, a model trained on internet data straight by January 2022 will have no information about more recent events. So given such a model, if you were to ask it what was the highest grossing film of the year 2022, it would say it doesn't know. Even though now that we're well past 2022, we know that it was the movie Avatar, The Way of Water, that was the highest grossing film. Around July 2023, there were claims of a research lab having discovered a room temperature superconductor called LK99. You may have seen this picture um, in some of the news. This claim turned out not quite to be right. But if you were to ask an LM about LK99, even though it's widely covered in the news, if the LM learned only from text on the internet as of January 2022, it won't know anything about this. So this is called a knowledge cutoff, where the LLM knows things about the world only up to a certain moment in time, when it was trained or when text from the internet was last downloaded for the LLM's training. A second limitation of LLMs is that they will sometimes just make things up, and we call these hallucinations. I found that if I asked an LLM to give me some quotes from well-known people in history, say, it will often make up the quotes. For example, if you ask it, give me three quotes that Shakespeare wrote about Beyonce. Since Shakespeare lived and died well before Beyonce, I don't think Shakespeare said anything about Beyonce. But the LLM will confidently give you back some quotes, like, a vocal shine like the sun, or all hail the queen, she is most worthy of love. 
So these are hallucinated Shakespearean quotes. Or if you ask it to list court cases tried in California about AI, it might give authoritative sounding answers like this. And in this case, it turns out the first case is real. There was a Waymo versus Uber case, but I was not able to find an Ingersoll versus Chevron case. And so the second case is a hallucination. Sometimes OMs can hallucinate things or make things up in a very confident, authoritative sounding tone. And this can mislead people into thinking that this made up thing may actually be real. Hallucinations can have serious consequences. There was a lawyer that unfortunately used ChatGPT to generate text for a legal case and actually submitted to the court, not knowing that he was submitting to the court a legal fouling with lots of made up court cases. And in this New York Times headline, we see in this cringe inducing court hearing, the lawyer who relied on AI said he did not comprehend that the chatbot could lead him astray. And this lawyer was sanctioned for submitting a court fouling for made up things. So understanding its limitations is important if you are using this for documents of real consequence. LMs also have a technical limitation in that the input length, that is the length of the prompt, is limited, and so is the output length of the text they can generate. Many LMs can accept a prompt of up to only a few thousand words, and so the total amount of context you can give it is limited. So if you were asking it to summarize a paper, and the paper's length is much longer than this input length limitation, the LM may refuse to process that input. In this case, you may have to give it one part of the paper at a time and ask it to summarize parts of the paper at a time. Or sometimes you can also find an OM with a longer input limit length. Some will go up to many tens of thousands of words. And technically, OMs have a limitation on what's called the context length. And the context length is actually a limit on the total input plus output size. When I use OMs, I rarely have it generate so much output that I run into limitation really on the output length, but I do hit input length limits sometimes if I have many, many thousands of words of context that I want to give it. Lastly, one major limitation of generative AI is that they do not currently work well with structured data. And by structured data, I mean tabular data, like the sort of data that you might store in an Excel or a Google Sheets spreadsheet. For example, here is a table of home prices with data on both the size of the house in square feet as well as the price of the house. If you were to feed all of these numbers into an OM and then ask it, I have a house that's a thousand square feet, what do you think is a good price? OMs are not really good at that. Instead, if you call the size the input A and the price the output B, then supervised learning would be a better technique with which to estimate the price as a function of the size. Here's another example of structured data, of tabular data, showing when different visitors may be visiting your website, how much you offer the product to them, and whether or not they purchased it. Then again, supervised learning would be a better technique than trying to copy-paste all of this time and price and purchase information into the prompt of a large language model. In contrast to structured data, Generative AI tends to work best with unstructured data. Structured data refers to tabular data of the sort you would store in a spreadsheet, whereas unstructured data refers to text, images, audio, video. And Generative AI does apply to all of these types of data, although the impact is the largest, and that's why we'll focus mostly on text data in this course. Finally, large language models can have bias output and can sometimes output toxic or other harmful speech. For example, large language models were trained on text off the internet. And unfortunately, text on the internet can reflect biases that exist in society. So if you were to ask an LM, complete the sentence, Sturgeon walked to the parking lot and took out, the LM might output his car keys. But if you say the nurse walked to the parking lot and took out, it may say her phone. So in this case, the LM has assumed that the surgeon is male and the nurse is female. Whereas we know that clearly surgeons and nurses can be any gender. And so if you're using an LM in an application where such biases could cause harm, I would use care 
in how we prompt and apply the LLM to make sure we don't contribute to such undesirable biases. Finally, some LLMs can also occasionally output toxic or other harmful speak. Uh, for example, some LLMs will sometimes teach people how to do undesirable, sometimes even illegal acts. Fortunately, all the major large language providers have been working hard on the safety of these models. And so most models have gotten much safer over time. And if you use the web interfaces, so the major LM providers, it's actually been getting much harder over time to get them to output these types of harmful speak. So that summarizes what prompting an LM can and cannot do. And as I mentioned, next week, we'll take a look at some techniques for overcoming some of these limitations to make what LMs can do even broader and more powerful. But first, let's take a look at some tips on prompting LMs. And I hope that the tips I share in the next video will be useful right away to how you use LMs. I'll see you in the next video.